Hi, I'm Pam Melroy, commander of the STS-120 mission, and you're watching NASA TV. We see the crew now making their way down the hallway. Once again, this is uh, what I was telling you about, and uh, we might get a chance to see some of the folks in crew quarters before they uh, get on the elevator. Once again, friends and people that have uh, worked hard to get us to where we're going. That was kind of nice. Uh, I haven't seen a crew do that before where they actually uh, stood there by the Astro van and had a chance to, to really make eye contact and wave at the folks there. Uh, those people came here early this morning with just uh, hope of getting a, a glimpse of the crew as they walked out. So that was uh, really nice. And this is a view from inside the vehicle up on the flight deck as Pam is coming in. You'll see she'll grab hold of a kind of a handhold overhead and have to pull herself in position. It uh, can be difficult to get into the shuttle in this configuration. It'd be like trying to get into your car if someone had stood it on the rear bumper overnight. Uh, right now, oh, there's Paolo. He's uh, got a message there in the white room. This is a view back on the flight deck uh, over on the pilot side as they're getting uh, uh, George in his seat and strapped in. So we're getting a good view now looking uh, down towards where Stephanie will be uh, right, right down towards her seat. That really is a good view. Uh, this is sitting uh, on the flight deck looking straight back. Uh, you can see uh, as you look at the screen on the left, that would be uh, George Zampka, the pilot. On the right, as you look at your screen, uh, you'll see uh, Pam's uh, right shoulder. And then straight ahead uh, is Stephanie as they get her strapped in. T minus 16 seconds, sound suppression water system has been activated, protecting Discovery and the launch pad from acoustical energy. We have a go for main engine start. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery, hoisting harmony to the heavens and opening new gateways for international science. Discovery has cleared the tower. Houston now controlling. Roll program. Roger roll, Discovery. Discovery's roll maneuver is complete. It's now in a heads down position on track for its flight to the International Space Station. Discovery seven miles downrange at an altitude of two statute miles. Flying at 600 miles per hour. Discovery's engines are throttling down as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum pressure on the vehicle. Now 50 seconds into the flight. Discovery eight miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of six statute miles, flying at 900 miles per hour. Discovery Houston, go at throttle up. Copy, go at throttle up. The three engines on board are throttling back up. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle boosters and external tank weighed four and a half million pounds. The total thrust at launch was 6,425,000 pounds. Discovery now 13 miles downrange at an altitude of 13 statute miles, flying at 1,700 miles per hour. 
All systems continue to function well. Three good main engines, three good power generating fuel cells, and three good auxiliary power units for the hydraulic system. Discovery now 24 miles downrange at an altitude 23 statute miles, flying at 2,700 miles per hour. One minute, 58 seconds into the flight, standing by for burnout and separation of the solid rocket boosters. Booster officer here in mission control confirming the booster separation. Main engine cutoff confirmed, now 8 minutes and 35 seconds into flight. External tank separation is also confirmed. Nine minutes into the flight, Discovery and her crew now in orbit. Discovery Houston, that was a nominal MECO. OMS-1 is not required. We'll meet you in the post-OMS-1 tab. Discovery and a special good morning to you today, Pam. Welcome to your first full space day for the STS-120. Thanks, Darren. That was uh, one of my favorite songs from the Christmas Rebels. Thanks to my husband, Doug. I love you. Houston Discovery, we think SSV has been set up. Uh, you might want to take a look at that and let us know if you're, uh, if you're seeing it. Hey, thanks for asking, uh, and we do see SSV, and we do have you uh, on the flight deck. Great to see you all. Discovery Commander Pam Milray also in view there with astronauts uh, Dan Tani and Paolo Nespoli. Now floating in view, pilot George Zamka. See you all, and look like you're having way too much fun. Yes, we're always having too much fun. This camera in the aft portion of Discovery's payload bay looking past the Harmony node towards the uh, forward portion of the vehicle. In this view, you can see the orbiter boom sensor system as it's being lowered into its uh, berth position. The onboard crew now having completed the survey activities that are standard flight day two activity. Good morning, Discovery, and a special good morning to you today, Dan. This is a big day for you. You're going to become a member of ISS and an official member of Expedition 17, I mean 16. Thank you, Shannon. You scared me there for a little bit. I thought I might be a little late, but uh, thanks very much. It's moving day for me, and I uh, can't wait to settle into my new home. Cameras on the outside of the International Space Station have now caught a glimpse of the space shuttle discovery, now trailing the International Space Station by about 12 statute miles, continuing to close in. Discovery Houston, we have pulled the room and you are go for TI. Most excellent, go for TI, thank you. And in this view from a camera on the International Space Station, the ignition of the left ohms uh, orbital maneuvering system engine was visible. Alpha Discovery, initiating RPM, three, two, one, mark. Alpha copies on two. Discovery's Commander Pam Milroy is maneuvering the vehicle through a nine minute, 360 degree backflip that uh, call 
from Discovery's pilot, George Zamka, on the start of the RPM, the Rendezvous Pitch Maneuver. Discovery, start photos. Alpha, start photos. Alpha, copy. Melanchico and Anderson beginning the photography process to methodically map out the underside of the spatial discovery. Alpha Discovery and photos. Station residents Yuri Melenchenko and Clay Anderson had 90 seconds to photograph the underside of the spatial discovery, that typically allowing about uh, 300 digital pictures to be taken of the shuttle's heat shield for downlink to Mission Control for analysis. Discovery on the big loop, you have a go for docking. Copy, go for docking. And Houston on two, the 800 RPM photos are on computer SSC 7, C drive, photos for downlink, rip them, 800 GMT date. Discovery and Alpha, capture confirmed. And ISS is in free drift. Houston copies. Good morning to you today, Wheels. We wish you a great first EVA. Thank you, and good morning, Shannon, and good morning to the control team in Houston. I'd like to say a special word of thanks and uh, good morning uh, to my wife, Kathy, and my daughter, Ashley. Thank you for that song. Astronaut Doug Wheelock in his spacesuit inside the crew lock, standing by for the start of his first spacewalk. My kids on Christmas morning, getting up early. This is a view of the space station robotic arm in motion with astronaut Doug Wheelock on the end holding on to the S-band antenna structural assembly en route to Discovery's cargo bay to stow that piece of hardware in place for return to Earth. This is a view from a camera on Wheelock's spacesuit from his point of view. Astronaut Scott Perzinski in view on the left already at Discovery's cargo bay. And this is a view from his helmet camera. Oh, 
Okay. I've arrived. Very good. So the first uh, step there is to attempt to store the large trash bag on uh, 369. Okay, Paul, I'll just give, me, give you my checks real quick here. Um, temperatures are fine. No need for glove heaters. Visor is up. Lights remain on. My gloves, uh, no delta from the, uh, the prior inspection. Although it does seem to be a little bit of ice or something. Interesting. And uh, Scott, uh, we were yeah. busy in the procedure. Did I hear that uh, you're complete with all uh, ADTF bolts? That is affirmative. Awesome. Great job. Yeah, thanks. It worked great. I'm just going to have to fairly my tether a little bit further forward on the starboard ODS. It didn't hold on the TSA like I'd hoped. And then I'll be right at the work site. Okay, Wheels and Paolo, uh, we're giving you the go to egress the APFR. Okay, copy, Dan. And uh, copy then. Paolo Amada, it's out of the APFR. And as I'm here, uh, I don't know if you get a wireless shot of the uh, snares I wanted to get from Mad Dog. Looks like the snares are in good shape on the uh, SSRMF. This is Mission Control Houston. The hatch into the new Harmony Node 2 module opened at 7.24 a.m. Central Time. Well, it's a pleasure to be here on this uh, 
very beautiful uh, piece of hardware. Uh, of course, it was uh, built in uh, Europe, in Italy, by an agreement with the European, European Space Agency and the Italian Space Agency, and built by the Italian industry. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that has worked hard in making this possible and allowing the space station to be uh, built even further and preparing the place for the Columbus Laboratory, the European Laboratory, and the Japanese Laboratory. And Houston, we just wanted to welcome the Harmony module on board the International Space Station. It's not birthed in its final location, but uh, we want we have opened the hatch to enter, and we wanted to acknowledge uh, the fact that and christen the, the uh, Harmony module itself. Uh, we think the Harmony module is a very Harmony is a very good name for this module because it represents the culmination of a lot of international partner work and will allow uh, additional international um, international partner modules to be added on. Harmony came to be, the name Harmony came to be from a contest of many different uh, schools around the country. Over 2,200 school ch children participated in this uh, contest and we wanted to acknowledge those schools. And I fogged over. So uh, Sue Wilson's third grade class at Buchanan Elementary School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Bridget Berry's eighth grade class at League City Intermediate School in League City, Texas. Bradley News, ninth grade science class at Lubbock High School in Lubbock, Texas. And Russell Yoakum's third grade class at West Navarine Intermediate School in Navarine, Florida. David Dexheimer's school at the World Group Home in Montana, Wisconsin. And Peggy, I've just got one more thing. Uh, I received as a gift from some of the people who worked on the uh, naming of Harmony uh, this beautiful necklace with a Harmony charm on it. And it seemed appropriate to me that the commander of the International Space Station who welcomed Harmony should have this. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. Good morning, Discovery. A special good morning to you today, Scott. It's a great day for an EBA. That's how you do it, Shannon. That's how you start the day in space. Uh, I can't think of a more beautiful way to begin the day than hear those words and I think it really describes the uh, the view from space, especially as seen through an EMU visor. Really looking forward to getting out there today with my, my good friend Dan, and I'd like to thank uh, my wife Gail and my kids Luke and Jenna. Uh, they really helped me see the wonder of the world. You can see here. Astronauts Paolo Nespoli and Peggy Whitson have been assisting with the spacewalk preparations, putting Tani and Perzinski into their suits and uh, putting them inside the crew lock section of Quest now. Alpha Discovery for uh, Robotics. Go ahead, Paolo. That you have a go to take the baby away. Copy, uh, go to D-mate P-6, and we also copy that EV-1 and EV-2 are in position to monitor separation. Verified, Wheels. Verified. Go to our flambeau. I see blue motion. Good motion. Good Here motion. Good direction. Good. Space remains clear. Copy, good motion. Okay, just did the... Slope of the uh, pin now. Uh, looks symmetric to me. I agree. Clean separation plane. Pins are free of the Z1 interface. We're just waiting to get the uh, capture bar free of the CLA. Agreed. They're in the center of the envelope for the CLA. Right down the middle. Drop it. Yeah, really. <laughs> this is Mission Control Houston with the view of the P6 truss structure. Towards the uh, bottom middle of the screen would be the end of the truss that has the solar ray wings that are retracted and in the uh, blanket boxes. 
those will be redeployed after the P6 is installed in its permanent location on the outboard port side of the station's truss structure. Tani outside inspecting around the solar alpha rotary joint as mission control monitors uh, for any indications that might be the cause of friction detected during rotation of that joint. Okay, let me tell you what I see. On the outer race, there are lots of uh, very fine metal shavings, and I can see that because the motor that is the, the what is that? That's a trunnion bearing. TBA 0134 has a lot of those metal uh, iron shavings. It's like the toy that you get uh, with the metal iron filings, and you put a magnet under it, and they stand straight up. Yes, I see that on the on the bracket there with the three rivets there. There is a big ding up there. Is that no, a ding no, or? That, those are metal shavings, and they there must be some magnetism or something there because they are they create a, a circular form there. Did you take a sample of those? Uh, are those the same same nature you think of the I other one? I think it's all the same. Yes, I do think it's the same. All right, copy. This is a view from the helmet camera on astronaut Scott Parzynski's spacesuit as he continues to work on the outside of the new Harmony Node 2 module, continuing to install various accessories on the outside, including handrails to be used by spacewalkers. You can see the horse you connect if I can go aft and get him. This is uh, here. Well, I think you can go forward and get him, I guess. you got to drive the bolts first, so. All right, I think uh, unless uh, ground has any other request, uh, we'll... Uh... Wait, wait for just one 30 seconds. So I'm looking at my hometown. Really? Yeah, let me see if I can find a lumbar. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's an awesome view. Hey, so the wind right there. It was fantastic. Nice it's clear day there. down there. It's nice fall weather. <laughs> and uh, I see O'Hare Airport, so I can make out my hometown lumbar. Good morning, Discovery, and a special good morning to you today, Stephanie. Good morning, Shannon. Space is certainly a special place to be, and I'd like to thank my parents, Barbara and Jean, for that song. Commanding is underway to deploy radiator number one on the station's starboard truss. The radiator panel you see deployed in this view is radiator number two, and that has been deployed for some time now. And movement visible now. The S1 number one radiator is being deployed. I got a little Saturday science uh, project for you on Monday today. We'd like to know if the shavings that you collected or Dan collected on the tape are ferrous metal. So we suggest that you use the Tevis emergency stop magnet to check and then report the uh, results back to us. It's very definitively uh, ferrous. Don Pettit, eat your heart out, huh? I wouldn't even pretend to come close to Don Pettit. <laughs> Okay, I feel like this is an episode right out of the Mythbusters here. It's definitely Ferris. Uh, for Commander Melroy, you've been told this mission will likely be extended. What's involved in your part to make this happen? Well, fortunately, we had actually talked about this possibility before we flew. Um, you know, it, things have gone pretty smoothly so far, uh, but the reality is there are so many different elements to the mission that for each one of those elements we talked about what would happen if something didn't go smoothly. And uh, we kept coming back to the option of adding a day. And, uh, and so I think in the end it doesn't really surprise us. Uh, and we've thought through some of the, the uh, implications of it already. Um, I think the biggest thing for us is uh, it's a, another day in space, dock to the space station, and that's great. Discovery, and a special good morning to you this morning, George. Good 
morning, Shannon. Uh, thank you uh, from Discovery for uh, that song. That was Malagena Salarosa. That's a rousing version of, my, of an old mariachi song that my mother liked when she was growing up in Bogota, Colombia. And that was for you, Mom. With initial uh, configurations complete inside the crew lock, astronaut Doug Wheelock now making his way out the hatch and will be followed by astronaut Scott Perzinski. And just looking across at the P6 side, uh, everything looks uh, free and clear on all four corners, including the, uh, the lanyards that were on the, uh, the male TV caps there. It looks good. Three, two, one, first contact. Off the hand controller. Nice job. Good job, guys. I move it down to the CLA. Good job to you guys. What a tremendous view. End of the road out here, Wheels. Uh, on J36 at uh, Zenith. Copy, Wills. for Terra Swap and probably don't need it, right? Uh, I do. Well, it depends on what, what else we're doing here today, but uh, I do need to. As the spacewalk activities uh, continue, the ground control team here also uh, preparing to move forward with the uh, deployment of the solar array wings on the newly installed P6 truss segment. Starting on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. EV1 and 2, it looks like they're getting the array all the way out on one side. Wow, that's great. Awesome. This is Mission Control Houston with a close up look at the 4B solar okay, array wing. My mark. Three, two, one mark. And mov movement in progress in the redeploy of the 4B solar array wing on the newest truss segment, the P6 truss now newly installed at the end of the existing truss segment. The 2B array wing fully deployed and now the start of the 4B array wing. Houston Alpha on the big loop, um, we uh, detected some uh, what appears to be a wraparound or some damage and we're zoomed in on it on camera 24 right now. Okay, Pambo, uh, we see it. Uh, thanks for the view. And of course we aborted and uh, sorry, it took us a little while to be sure that we weren't being fooled by the uh, lighting. Discovery, air to ground two for Pam and some big picture words on the day. What we've elected to do is uh, bypass the EVA opportunity for tomorrow and instead uh, get you a plan later on today that you can review uh, through the evening and into tomorrow uh, for an EVA on flight day 12. And what that'll leave you with uh, long term uh, provided the EVA goes well on uh, flight day 12. It's a nominal undocking on uh, flight day 14. Okay, Fergie, we copy all, and uh, we uh, absolutely concur that the right thing to do is to uh, make sure that the plan has a little self-life and maturity and that you've thought about it and you feel confident in it. Uh, we do appreciate you sending stuff up to us as soon as you think it's got um, some at least moderate level of maturity uh, so that we can just stay in sync with you all the way through the day. And, uh, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think it's a disappointment a little bit to not go out, but uh, we know we're getting ready to do it, and we'll just have a little more time to prepare. So uh, I don't think that's a problem at all. And um, we sure appreciate the update. This was early this morning. Uh, us just uh, getting out of uh, bed and getting ready to start our day. Uh, uh, we had Scott uh, getting ready for the day there, uh, starting to shave. We uh, uh, It's a bit of a scramble in the morning. You've, you've got uh, 
obviously seven folks that are trying to get through a limited number of uh, facilities and get to their towels and get to their uh, their water and everything. But we uh, we manage uh, having three dimensions to do it uh, helps because we just kind of crawl over and around and float by each other and manage to uh, to get it done. Uh, also, uh, you know, our post sleep is a few minutes to uh, to type some messages to home, and there's Doug uh, uh, typing on our KFX machine, waving to home. That's the machine all the cards go in when we uh, send cards to you guys. This is a shot, uh, Tony, that I took of Zambo. Uh, uh, this is a uh, dear governor on the uh, on the mid deck. Not a lot of room there, but um, I was up on the ceiling looking down. Uh, uh, on Zambo, and he's getting a pretty good workout. That's a shot of Stephanie uh, by the galley getting her workout in uh, watching Zambo. This is a view of Station Commander Peggy Whitson and Spatial Discovery Pilot George Zamko working the, the procedure to build the hardware to be used during the fourth spacewalk of this mission to effect a repair on the solar array panels on the P-6 truss that were noticed to be uh, damaged during their deployment on Tuesday. The spacewalk to be conducted by astronauts Scott Parazinski and Doug Wheelock during on uh, Saturday now involves uh, attempting to draw together the panels that seem to be uh, torn at a hinge by using the hardware that's uh, being built here. The hardware being referred to as cufflinks or a hinge stabilizer cufflinks because it uh, will resemble a cufflink in that uh, these aluminum bars will be at two ends of wires to be fed through either side of the hinge on the panels to hopefully draw them together. Uh, the thing I wanted to say about this was it was a, a wonderful turnkey procedure. And and uh, I've, I've got to say, we are—we uh, can't imagine all the work that all the folks on the ground are are uh, putting in. But uh, this this was an example of, of uh, some amazing work. Uh, 14 pages, uh, very clean, uh, very uh, uh, very easy to follow. Uh, Peggy and I spent the first, uh, let's say, about 20 minutes gathering the tools from the uh, space station lockers that we needed. And uh, then we sat down and started making these. Uh, they're made of uh, about foot-long uh, aluminum strips that we cut into uh, little buttons that were about uh, four inches uh, long and punched some holes into them, ran some uh, wire through them, and uh, taped it all up to make it uh, non-conductive and safe for the EVA team uh, to handle. Um, and we also got to play with some tools. Uh, right there, we started uh, configuring a... Uh, an aluminum uh, uh, hole punch to uh, to put holes in it, but uh, just some uh, you know we we basically uh, were the benefactors of some wonderful work on the ground, and I just wanted to uh, it's it's not going to be enough, but I want to pass thanks for uh, folks that are that are working so hard to make sure that we have success up here. Uh, this is us in the airlock. Actually, you can see Pambo and uh, Scott and Paula and me uh, were gathered around, actually getting ready for an EVA conference. Uh, uh, with um, uh, we were, we talked to Robo a little bit tonight, and also to our EVA team. So you can see, uh, looking into the crew lock, uh, crew lock there, there's the two EMUs uh, hanging on the wall, and then um, uh, behind me in that view is the uh, is the entry to the airlock itself. To, uh, actually, the equi equipment lock is what you're looking into, and then the crew lock uh, right behind uh, where my feet are there. And Alpha and Discovery Houston on uh, Air to Ground 2, just to uh, fill you in with what we got going on down here. Uh, Mrs. Barbara Bush is here, and uh, she brought her husband, and so uh, they're hooked up on the headsets and ready to talk to you. Most impressive display as you all came in there and started tumbling around, uh, somersaulting your way to this fine uh, show off here. But uh, Pam, we want to wish you well and all your t all your team, uh, and we are so very proud of what you all are doing. Uh, Mike here, the director of it all, has given us started giving us a good briefing on this. So Barbara and I are just thrilled to be here. Thank you.
you, Mr. President and Mrs. Bush. We are uh, absolutely thrilled and uh, honored to be speaking to you, as is everybody in Mission Control, I'm sure. And we just want to thank you for your support of the space program. Uh, this is uh, the visible evidence of it. And, um, yes, it is a lot of fun to be in microgravity. <laughs> well, bless you all. And uh, God bless you as well. Uh, well, good luck. Back to work now. Back to work, all you guys. Don't be just sitting around having fun. <laughs> We're so proud of you all. Very, very proud. Good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. That is our flight deck. Uh, looks a little bit like my grandpa's basement, uh, kind of like a hobby shop. We've got our photo TV equipment and our PGSCs everywhere. We've got tapes lined up, ready to go, and uh, I think this is Paolo's, uh, Paolo's tour that he did this morning. He's bringing out his ergonometer or ergometer shoe bag. He's getting ready to get a workout uh, in later today. We did something associated with the IWIS uh, test. Paolo has taught me uh, some Italian um, hospitality manner, so I was uh, demonstrating uh, what it's like to be in our home. And the stowage is starting up to uh, accumulate in the airlock. We, uh, we've got bags that uh, will, that's not their final configuration, but uh, we put them there temporarily, and it makes for a little bit of a tight squeeze as we go on out the ODS and then into the, uh, the PMA and then finally into the lab. pretty good at this floating stuff. I, I more times than not tend to get a bit of a uh, rotational rate on and uh, the lab is big enough where once you get it going uh, it, it tends to keep going until I catch a handrail. This is uh, Boichi and Stephanie getting ready to do some uh, robotics. Boichi is not his real name obviously that's Dan Tanny. We, Boichi is his, his uh, Bo crew name. This Dan Bo bringing by a, uh, a CWC. Looks like potable water. And we're into node one. To the left is the airlock, and to the right is the temporary site of node two. And that is the red that uh, Scott is looking at right there. Looks like he's doing a, a flip on his route. Oh, there he is. And node two is uh, quickly being put into use uh, for some temp stowage. Uh, and uh, there's also some outfitting being done. And of course, we did uh, we built the. Uh, uh, the hinge support units, the, the cufflinks, uh, we put those together in there last uh, yesterday because the light was so good. Over into the airlock, uh, looking at the EMUs uh, that we're going to be using tomorrow. The EMUs, of course, are kept in the, uh, the equipment lock, and then uh, Paolo goes into the crew lock. That's the part that gets separated and taken down to vacuum, and that's uh, in the floor there is, is the hatch uh, which the, uh, the EVA mem members uh, egress. I'm your father. Use the horse, Luke. <laughs> that's, uh, that's music for my son, Luke, and I'll uh, be thinking about him today and uh, the rest of my family as I go out and do this uh, wonderful spacewalk with my, my good buddy, uh, Wheels, here, and this is going to be a big day for NASA. Go get him, Spike. All right, Spike. Get her done. Looks like you'll get to do the needle-nose trick after all. Beat. And follow for wheels, uh, just as a look ahead, uh, I hope my translation down the Nader rail, I think. One hour and 25 minutes into today's spacewalk, astronaut Scott Perzinski now on a foot restraint on the end of the orbiter boom sensor system, being maneuvered away from the station's truss and the first uh, movement of Canada Arm 2 in the boom on uh, the way towards the worksite on the P6 truss solar array panels. Okay, Paolo, my... Uh, 
first 85 foot safety tether is going to be stowed on 5232, and my new anchor point is 5311. Copy wheels, uh, anchor 5311, and the stow 5232. That's good, good copy, Paulo, and I'll give you the check here in just momentarily. The, uh, the damage is as uh, anticipated. There is a, uh, a hairball with uh, the uh, guide wire, the uh, hinge uh, between uh, 35 and 36, and a grommet. Not sure of the origin of it, but probably at the 35-36 uh, location. There is a uh, separation of uh, the doubler, that, the physical hinge, off of uh, inboard lower side of uh, panel 36. Looks to be about uh, 8 to 10 inches in length. Just ripped clean from the, uh, the edge of the panel. You can see that the, the cells are still intact on the backside. It just uh, came off from the edge. Astronaut Scott Parazinski starting to install the hardware that was built on board the station to provide structural support for the solar, solar array panels. A little dynamic on the, the blanket. Yeah, and I'm sorry, Scott, I should have uh, read you that warning that any any activity you do could cause uh, motion and you need to be ready with the hockey stick or ready to lean back away from it. That I'm ready. And that was a beautiful thing, though, to see that, that uh, cufflink go into the hole. Yes, it was. I just want to apply a little force to uh, get it fully engaged there. That's how you do it. Yeah, That's we see your tug cufflink. test looks good. Yep. Good job. This view from the helmet camera on astronaut Doug Wheelock's spacesuit looking at astronaut Scott Parazinski at the worksite on the solar ray panel. Good clearances, Robo. Copy, good clearances. And Scott will ramp out the end if it's good. That's fine. Copy. So I think we're probably clear clear off to get to a viewing position. And Houston Discovery, do you concur? We think uh, we're ready to pull back Scott to the viewing position and uh, begin the solar array deploy. We are happy with the current config and we're ready for you to back off and get ready for the deploy. Okay, preparing for the deploy, half bay. I think we're good, Sam. Okay, on my mark. Two, one, mark. Got motion. Okay. To verify the mass is coming out of the canister. Sight looks good. It's no, under no tension at this time. Looks good. And we've hit, we've uh, planned. We've hit the plan to board at half a bay. Okay. Couple links remain uh, inboard of the edges. Looks smooth here. All right, deploy in two, one, mark. We've got deploy discrete. Two deploy discrete. Yay! All right. Beautiful. Great news. Beautiful. What an accomplishment. Nice teamwork. Phenomenal. Excellent work, guys. Excellent. One of the interesting things about uh, what we did today was that it truly required uh, everyone. We had um, everyone on the shuttle crew and uh, at various times uh, most of the station crew doing things. We were more or less at the limit of the uh, station arms reach capability. I kind of thought we were when uh, we did the P6 install on EVA3, but we learned differently today. Um, kind of had the arm all unfolded, uh, poking that boom out there as close as uh, it could get to the solar array so that Scott could reach. This makes it a lot trickier when you have two ends of the boom to keep clear rather than just one. A lot of people had to put on their thinking caps uh, with that uh, robotics activity because of the stretched out arm and the ground, I thought, uh, did a wonderful job of coming up with some good suggestions for us for uh, how to maneuver the arm, and uh, Dan and Stephanie just uh, really showed how well the basic, uh, the basic uh, qualifications are that you can do something unusual like that on short notice. 
I guess this is the time when Discovery officially welcomes Clay with open arms to our crew. We can't wait to bring you home to your family, and we're very happy to have you. I think uh, uh, it's not even a question of fitting in because our crews have matched so well. There's been a lot of laughter and a lot of fun and a lot of really hard work over the last few dock days. And it's also our time to say farewell to Dan. Dan has brought us so many wonderful memories and so many wonderful moments from going to Knowles together, all the training that we've done together, and uh, a truly incredible day together yesterday. Just kind of brought so much time, uh, so much effort all together for all of us. So we're going to miss you terribly. Uh, we promise uh, that we will send somebody to come pick you up and bring you home. And to Peggy, thank you. It's just been an honor and a privilege to uh, share uh, the command of this mission with you uh, throughout the doc time frame. And uh, our personal relationship has just made it all that much better. And Yuri, thank you so much for all the help that you gave to us as well. We simply could not have accomplished the mission without everybody's help. And so the, the two crews... The two crews have worked together so well that this is uh, one that we will always remember. We're family now. There will be no cities from Iowa during the increment 16. Houston copies. Alpha copies. Settle departing. Discovery copies. Thanks, Peggy. Thank you guys for the module and all your help. Discovery Alpha on the big loop. Zambo. Great job, buddy. Great job flying. Really cool to see you out there. Dan Boichi, uh, thanks very much. We're going to miss you, but we know you're going to have a great time up there with Peggy and Yuri. And uh, have a great expedition, and we'll see you on the ground. I'll do that, man. And uh, the whole uh, boat crew, I'm, I miss you already. And uh, uh, fly safe, uh, get home safe. Um, I'll see you on the ground. And uh, thanks for not only the great ride up, but the great year and a half together. And uh, uh, I owe you one. Just one. <laughs> Scott said that was beautiful. Good morning, Discovery, and good morning, Pam, and thank you so much for that great wake-up music, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. It was absolutely the perfect music, the perfect wake-up music for a perfect entry day. Well, the shuttle may not have uh, fine four fenders, but uh, it's got two beautiful wings, and we're looking forward to uh, a smooth touchdown later today. Discovery Houston, you're on energy approaching the hack. Update for winds. They're peaking at 23 knots on the head and four knots from the right. You'll be nominal shoot deploy. Deploy. Discovery Houston on at the 180. Copy on at the 180.
Discovery Houston, on at the 90. Copy, on at the 90. Two minutes to touch down this view from the heading, the heads up display. As Commander Pam Mulroy continuing now to fly around the heading alignment cylinder. Houston Discovery, runway in sight. Copy, field in sight. Discovery flying at 390 miles per hour at an altitude of 11,000 feet. One and a half minutes to touch down. Discovery's descent rate is 20 times higher and 7 times steeper than a commercial airliner on the final approach. Discovery's landing gear is down and locked in place. Main gear touchdown. rotating the nose gear down to the runway and nose gear touchdown. Discovery is rolling out on runway 33 at the Kennedy Space Center, wrapping up a 6.25 million mile mission. Discovery completing its 34th mission to space and the 23rd shuttle flight to the International Space Station. We'll stop Discovery. Congratulations on a tremendous mission and a great landing, Pam. And we'll meet you on page 5-3 with no deltas. Stop y'all. It's great to be out here on this gorgeous day. Uh, a little breezy. Um, it's great to be back in Florida, especially the home of Discovery. We could not have done this mission without Discovery being as clean and beautiful as it was. Discovery worked perfectly, and I just want to say a big thank you to everybody at the Kennedy Space Center for everything that you do, because it takes the entire team to pull it together to launch a shuttle as clean as this. And that goes for the whole agency. I think the whole agency had to pull together for this particular mission. We saw a lot of very unusual things happen. Uh, we did a, a pretty amazing EVA, and that was very exciting. It's a thrilling day for both the space shuttle and the space station programs, vindicating both programs and their purpose and their flexibility in space. I just want to say thank you. We are thrilled to be back home. Sorry that uh, Clay and Paolo couldn't be out here. They're doing great. They're just doing some extra medical tests, so they couldn't join us right now. But uh, I know they feel the same way, particularly Clay. Can't wait to uh, see his wife soon. It's their 15th wedding anniversary. So if you see Clay, be sure to say happy anniversary. And thank you to everybody for uh, a beautiful vehicle and a beautiful mission.